Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's clip, I'll answer the question, can I use an action camera with the brand new Osmo Mobile 3? Now, we've gotten this question from a lot of folks on the channel, and I completely understand what you're trying to do. You bought the Osmo Mobile 3, you've popped your phone in there, taken it out in the field, and recorded some incredibly stable footage because a mechanical gimbal like this does an exceptionally good job of holding your smartphone stable and getting some buttery smooth video out in the field. But then you started thinking, well, I've got an action camera at home. Maybe you own the Hero 7 or the Osmo Action, and these have in-camera digital stabilization, which again produces really stable footage, but what if I could mount one of these guys on a mechanical gimbal and have the best of both worlds? I've got digital image stabilization, mechanical image stabilization. That footage is going to be insanely stable. So before I get into it, I have to say, I love the way you're thinking because as an engineer, I'm constantly going through those what-if scenarios on my own. Can I bolt this on that to get a better result? And that's exactly what you're asking here. So I couldn't wait to get started on this. I'm here to tell you, unfortunately, at this point, after all the testing I've done over the last three weeks, buying a bunch of different mounting plates, putting together some of my own solutions out of cardboard and rubber bands, a lot of Frankenstein projects, I've yet to find a reliable way to mount an action camera on the Osmo Mobile 3 that actually works and stabilizes the footage. Now, that's not to say that there aren't accessory companies that are just about to release some new mounting plate that works with the Osmo Mobile 3, or some of you 3D printing wizards out there might have come up with a solution as well. But all the stuff I've tested, and I spent a ton of time and money buying a bunch of different mounting plates from a bunch of different companies to try and get this thing sorted out for you guys, I've yet to find a solution there. So I'm doing the clip for two reasons. Number one, it seems like a really simple thing to do, and I don't want you going out spending money on a bunch of these plates because some of the plates are being advertised as if they work with the Osmo Action and they work with the Osmo Mobile 3, and I'm here to tell you they don't. So I've cleverly taped over the names of these two companies because I don't want to disparage any of them because they actually work really well with the Hero products on the original Osmo Mobile 2, which is a curious thing because if it worked on the 2, you think it would work on the 3, but there's a couple of reasons why they don't yet work on the 3. So I'll talk about the differences in the mounting plates and explain why these things are a bit of a problem still. And if you found a solution, drop it in the comments below because I'd love to hear about it. So when I analyze this, there's really three things you have to keep in mind. The weight limitations, the mounting options, and the electronic control of the camera. And I'll go through those three individually. Now, two of them aren't a big deal, but the third one's a big deal. So the weight issue is not really a problem whatsoever because this can handle about 200 grams, plus or minus 30 grams. The cameras are really lightweight. The GoPro is 118 grams. This one's 124 grams. I have a huge iPhone 10. That's 266 grams. I use it on there, it works just fine. So weight's not really an issue, even when you consider the cage that this snaps into, or you consider one of these mounting plates, they're, they're still well under that 200 grams. So when I started it, I go, okay, it's going to handle the weight. That should be an easy thing to do. So weight's not an issue. The mounting's where it starts to get interesting because there are fundamentally two types of mounting plates. There's one like this, and I'll do some close-ups, but there's one like this that's flat. There's another one like this that has this little divot in the back, and it's got a counterweight on this end that actually makes up for the weight of the camera on this end. So it helps to balance it mechanically like this in the arm. And the challenge with these, number one, if you look at the way the cameras fit in them, there's a cutout right here that's the exact size of the camera. So most of these plates were built for the GoPro style cameras. And if you hold these up side by side, it should be pretty apparent that the Osmo Action is wider this way and it's also shorter this way. Now the shorter part's not a big deal, but the wider part's a really big deal because they basically cut a little outline in here to fit that GoPro Hero uh, profile perfectly, which means the Osmo Action isn't gonna bolt in there really easy, so it's kinda wonky to get it mounted in there. Some of the newer plates, actually like this one, are long enough where you can put it in there and it'll bolt in. So it's not terribly a problem for most of them, but you have to check that. If you're looking at these kind of plates, once they release one for the Osmo Action that they claim works with the Osmo Mobile 3, you wanna make sure that it'll actually mount in there. The second problem, which is a bigger issue, is they've changed the way the clamps work on the arms. So on the new Osmo Mobile 3, you've got a clamp on here that looks a lot like the new Ronin product where it's got two fingers that grab the phone in the top and the bottom. Now the advantage of that is that they're not gonna hit the button. So if you've got an iPhone, you've got buttons along the end. The problem with these flat grips like this one is they would clamp the phone in, but they might hit the buttons because you've got to slide the phone back and forth to balance it. With this one, there's no worry about hitting the buttons. The problem is it doesn't grip these assemblies really well because this one with the divot, actually it's offset. You can't get it in there. It doesn't really grip it well. It's sort of, you can't balance it to get the camera actually balanced evenly on the product. This one's a bigger problem because even though you can grip it because it's a nice flat surface, 
The second problem are these bolts on the back, because when you tighten the camera into this assembly, these bolts jut out the back, and I can't slide it anywhere past those bolts. So I think when the new product comes out, if there's gonna be one released, these have to be cut down to a size that doesn't stick out like that. They should be flush with this assembly, so I can actually clip them in there. But the fact that these bolts are there means that I can't slide this back and forth to balance it. The third problem, even if I solve those two problems, the third problem with the mount is that on the Osmo Mobile 2, you had a lot of adjustments. So you had a mechanical adjustment where I could slide this and I could slide the unit up and down. I could use this one to slide the arm in and out. So I had a lot of adjustments to move the camera left and right and actually move the arm in and out to find a perfect balancing point. So if this was a little bit offset on one side for weight, I could put it in there and compensate for it. The challenge with the Osmo Mobile 3, which is an advantage of this product, is there is no way to make that adjustment left and right. Everything is fixed. The only adjustment you have is basically mounting the phone here and then sliding it back and forth to get it exactly in the center of that mount. If it's a little bit off one way, it's going to flip down or flip down this direction. And the problem is you can't, with these bolts sticking out the back, you can't slide it far enough to actually mount it in there correctly. So the mounting is a major issue at this point. Now, again, I'm sure there are people out there that are hard at work with 3D printers coming up with some way they can make a mount for this that'll fit in the Osmo Mobile 3. And I'm keeping my eye out. So if something like that's released, I'm definitely going to pick them up. I'll test them. If you've got a solution, send me an email and I'll take a look at it. But the mount's really the main Major problem. The third problem, which is not that big a deal, is that the application, the DJI MIMO application, runs on your phone. So you're going to download it to your smartphone, you're going to put it in the mount, you're going to start the application, and that's where all the brains come from that actually control it, because you're doing a connection to the actual unit itself to control how the thing works. You don't really have the opportunity to run those applications on these um, action cameras. They're basically, they're really, really smart, but they don't allow you to load applications on them. So the challenge becomes, how do I access all those different features and functions and settings inside there. So if we do get this working, what you're basically going to have to do is turn this thing on, put it in record mode, snap it in there, and then walk around with it. You won't have a lot of control over you know, starting and stopping and all the rest of that stuff. You're going to have to be very careful about the software because there's limitations not having the MIMO app running where I can actually control the camera. So that one's not that big a deal for me because I'm using it on here. I will start the recording. I'll just go out and do my recording and fix it and post. But a lot of people like to have that level of control over it, and you can only do that on a smart smartphone today. So I guess the long and short of it is the weight's not an issue. You can get around the application part of it by just turning it on and starting recording. But the mount at this point is really the holdback of getting this thing working because the two styles of mounts that I've tested, the flat one and the one with the divot in it, both have individual problems that aren't fixed yet. And the fact that they're really geared to fit a GoPro product in there, not the Osmo Action, means that physically it's difficult to mount them in there. So that's pretty much where I'm at. And I, I know it's disappointing because I was really hoping I could use it for that. But at this point, I haven't found a way to do that. So I'm going to continue to test. But so many people were asking and they were starting to get really aggressive about, hey man, I asked you weeks ago, why didn't you answer the question? I wanted to make sure I did the testing. And honestly, I think I have 15 or 16 of these. I bought every company's product that I could get my hands on. And honestly, a couple of them said they work with the Osmo Action product in the Osmo Mobile 3. They don't work. And that's why I'm covering them up with tape. So if I do find one, I'll do an update clip and let you know. Probably one of those top five questions answered clips on the, on the Osmo Mobile 3. But for now, save your money. There is no way that I've found to actually use an action camera with this product at present, and that's the conclusion for today. So that's all I had. Uh, please stay tuned. I've got five or six more clips about this product around sort of an aggressive image stabilization test I'm going to do, kind of a radical test on that. I've got other things that test the Active Track 3.0 that I'm working on, so I'll probably put a couple of shorter clips out to give you insights into both of those feature sets. I love this product. I know I've raved about it when I've done the clips before, but I think they've really made major improvements in a lot of the functions on the Osmo Mobile 3 over the 2. They've reduced the price recently. I think it's a great product. If you're looking for a stabilized gimbal out there and you want to shoot videos on your smartphone because you've got a great camera on there, this thing's a no-brainer, and it folds up really small, so it makes it really portable. But anyway, that's all I had for today. So thanks an awful lot for watching. If you're enjoying these clips and you want to subscribe to the channel and join the Drone Valley family, hit that little icon down there, turn the bell on. That way, when we put a clip up, you'll get a nice ding on your phone. You can come by and watch what we're doing. I have a ton more content coming. I've got a bunch of drone stuff I'm going to be doing over the next week or so, and a bunch of other high-tech that we like to review on the channel. So thanks to all fly for watching and until next time, happy flying.